Three Rivers is the last of the southern parks in the Rio Grande Rift. Now we're going to head northwest to the Rio Grande itself. On the way, we're going to a place where the rift stretched the earth so thin that lava spewed out and covered over 125 square miles of the Tellarusa Basin. We're going to go 30 miles north till we hit the historic town of Carriazozo. It seems a shame not to stop here, but I don't. It's a place where Billy the Kid and Pat Garrett spent some time, back when it was a thriving railroad and mining town. Four miles west is the youngest lava field in North America. Between two and 5,000 years ago, Hawaii-like lava spewed from at least one vent and flowed for 44 miles. In places, it's up to 165 feet thick. And lucky for us, the BLM made a recreation area out of a high spot surrounded by all this olivine basalt. They call it Valley of Fires. It has 20 campsites, most with RV hookups, a nature trail, and a small visitor center with trail maps and one less refrigerator magnet. All this volcanism is, of course, a part of the rifting story. In the white sand segment, we learned that the rifting began 30 plus million years ago. A hot plume of magma rose from the mantle and pushed the area up, kind of like this rising pumpkin bread. Eventually the top splits down the middle and later drops. But more material is pushed up and out, building a mountain range on either side of the rift. It looks remarkably like the range we saw at Three Rivers. The drop in the middle made it easier for the lava to reach the surface. And that's what it did. It flowed over the surface in at least two events for more than two decades. I was planning on blazing my own trail in the lava field. It's one of the great things about BLM sites. You can just wander around as you wish. And I also saw this little trail on Google Earth. But once I was here on the ground, I couldn't find it. The scale and randomness of all the rocks was much more challenging than I expected. Apparently the same was true for the Spanish, because they named this place Malpias, which I'm sure I'm pronouncing wrong. It means badlands, or bad footing. After I had lunch at one of the picnic tables, I decided to take you around the one mile paved Malpias Trail to get a good look at all this weird lava. It starts near a shelter with a viewpoint and an info sign that tells you where the lava came from. It has a steel pipe that points to Little Black Peak, which is a barely 100 foot tall cinder cone volcano. And weirdly, the lava didn't come out of its top. It came out of a vent near ground level. Another sign had a trail map, which I managed to shoot but not read for some reason. So I went the wrong way around. There's also a map on the site's brochure, which I was able to download. No, I'm not gonna show you all 14 of the special places, You'll have to come here yourself to see them all. There's no bad footing on this trail. It was designed for wheelchairs with a very gentle slope. After the switchbacks, the trail hugs the edge of the lava flow. By the way, the temp on this December day was in the 60s. It was windy, but quite pleasant. The trail heads into the flow at this huge rock pile. Again, you have to be here to understand the scale of it. And remember, this thing was molten. It was incredibly hot. It was radiating heat and moving until it bumped against this rise. And this caused that once flat surface to tilt. It has amazing folds, crags, and ripples. And those ripples have a fancy Hawaiian name, Pohoi Hoi. From here, the trail goes right over the lava field. It goes up and down with the contours of the flow. We're now approaching trail marker 13. It's near a likely collapsed lava tube. Hard to really see where the tube was, but it's pretty much in that ditch. The other side looks a little bit more like a tube, part of the broken roof, which has been tilted nearly 90 degrees. There are intact tubes in this huge field, and they could have been used as shelter by early humans. Life is hard here, even for the very hardy juniper tree. This one is dead, but it's still a part of the ecosystem, providing food and shelter for birds and insects. As we walk along, many of you will think, well, this is just a big pile of boring black rock. Well, to appreciate it, at least once, stop and take a good look. Really think about how it got here. It started deep in the mantle, 
and reaching the surface was just the first part of the journey. When it first came out of that vent and joined the Boiling Rock River, it took miles for it to flow to here until it finally stopped. It's really more amazing than boring when you think about it. This live juniper tree is 400 years old, and there's lots of yucca. To early Americans, this place was like a Home Depot. The yucca leaves could be weaved into floor mats and bedrolls. The wood, of course, could be burned for heat. Some of the plants provide seeds that can be eaten, and these rocks could be used to grind them into flour. If you look at Google Earth's map, the place looks black and barren. But when you're here, this place is anything but barren. The rough surface has so many places for seeds and water and dirt to collect that it's perfect for the right type of plants to find a home. Eventually their roots, along with time, will break down all this rock into soil. As I was walking along, I just had to stop here. This is a great example of Pohoyahoy, that ropey, ripply rock with that Hawaiian name. Before we leave the lava field, this info sign is an important reminder that there are those who came before us. The Mescalero Apache used to call this area home. They were placed on a nearby reservation in the 1870s. It took less than 30 minutes to do this trail, and I found it very rewarding. It's pretty amazing that we can see all of this huge basalt lava field, and you can do it without going all the way to Hawaii. Well, I hope you enjoyed our little tour of Valley of Fires. It's another great stop in the rift, and it's the easiest way to see a huge lava field without going all the way to Hawaii. We're gonna make one more very quick stop before Albuquerque, because this road provides access to the Trinity site, which is where the first atomic bomb was tested. On the way, we're gonna climb the west ridge of the Tularosa Basin and enter the Albuquerque Basin. There's no white sand or basalt in this one. It's very flat and empty, pretty much as it was in 1945. You can only get to Ground Zero as part of an officially sanctioned tour, and they only have them a couple of times per year, and the tickets are very hard to come by. The best and brightest of the United States designed and built the first atomic bombs in Los Alamos, north of Albuquerque. They chose a desolate site south of this historical marker to test it. Their work brought an end to World War II. Well, that's the end of this segment, and I hope that you're glad that you now know about Three Rivers Petroglyph Site and the Valley of Fires. There are a couple of places that deserve to be seen. Please subscribe and give it a thumbs up to support this channel that is dedicated to helping you explore the West. New Mexico has many more parks to visit, and next time we're going to explore a few that celebrate New Mexico's Native American past and document the arrival of the Spanish.